What is going on, everybody? It's the Fonz, and we're here for yesterday, last night's episode of Monday Night Raw Review, which is the first episode of Raw under the Bruce Pritchard era, and you can definitely tell that this show is going to suffer worse than before. Paul Heyman, under the Paul Heyman's regime of this, it was sacrifice ratings for now for the betterment of the company later. Vince McMahon is impatient, so Vince McMahon decided we're going to do, stop doing that, and we're going to worry about now. So what did they do tonight, last night? Paul Heyman was gone, so we have Big Show on the show, Ric Flair, and Christian, supposedly having his first match back in six years. We had more shenanigans with the Viking Raiders, the Street Profits, and those ninjas. We had a rematch of Nia Jax versus Oscar. the... MVP, Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre saga still continues, and so much more. But before that, I have to admit, my computer died on me last night before I got to do anything. That's why I'm using my phone right now to record this. But we started the show off with Randy Orton. Orton said he did exactly what he did, what he said he was going to do. He ended the redemption story of Edge. He embarrassed him. All Edge had to do was trust him when he came back at WrestleMania. Orton wasn't the last man standing, but I won the greatest wrestling match ever. So that makes me the greatest wrestler ever. So I kind of figured they were going to go down that route. Of course you're going to have Randy Orton say I'm the best, greatest wrestler ever. It's just what you do. Orton thanked him for reminding him what it feels like to be the legend killer. Orton takes credit for tearing Edge's tricep clean off the bone. Which they did decide to show us a picture of Edge during surgery. Which I did not need to see. And this... Then he says, well I hear you're going to be... You're going to be cleared in July of 2029, so I'll see you again in nine years. This prompts Christian to come out, and he says, I don't see a great wrestler, I see a son of a bitch. Says Edge will never quit, Edge will be back. Orton claims Christian is jealous of Edge and says he knows what Christian wants. He, Christian wants one more match. I just, Christian's like, no, that is not it. I'm here to defend my friend. And Orton's like, stop it. Stop it. You're lying. We know what you want. I know you can't be cleared because of your health and everything. But there's a way to get past that. And that's simple. We can have ourselves a unsanctioned match. We do not get an answer from Christian right away. Orton says that offer will be continuing until... This afternoon, by the end of the show, because if you don't do it, you are a coward. And Orton walks off. Christian is there left to ponder. This is Vince McMahon's way of going, well, the ratings are down. USA Network understands that the ratings are down because of the pandemic and that you're going to be using younger talent, which you need to build these ratings back up. You cannot have WWE continue to rely on Christian, Ric Flair, The Big Show. That's only going to work Every once in a blue moon. I was one of the few people who actually didn't want to see Edge go past the Royal Rumble. I figured, oh, Edge comes back. He has himself a nice little moment in the Rumble. And that's it. He didn't need a match at WrestleMania. He didn't need to have the match at Backlash. He could have just did the Rumble and said, hey, I did what I wanted to do. I got some closure. I'm good. But no, they continued to go on with Edge after that. So do you really think I want to see Christian come back and attempt to have a match? Which... Wasn't even really a match, but we'll get to that later. Kevin Owens versus Angel Garza with Zelina Vega. Of course, we're backstage, and Charlie, I think it was Charlie Caruso was with Zelina Vega and Angel Garza, and they, well, she asked him about what happened on at Backlash. And of course, Zelina Vega and Angel Garza are like, we had nothing to do with Andrade losing his championship opportunity the night before. They, he says, he pretty much asks her, well, after I beat Kevin Owens, do you want to come to the ring to give me another special one of you? Still flirting with this woman. Andrade comes in, pretty much saying, I hope you realize you're going to be disappointed after this is all said and done. He leaves, we go to break, we come back, and it's Angel Garza and Kevin Owens. This match only just gets starting, and then Andrade comes out. Those two bicker a little bit, for good, like, those two bicker... While his match is going on, Zelina Vega is not happy, so she decides to powder from the ring, from the ringside area, and leaves these two to deal with the with their problems. So Vega storms off after the break. Cruiser lands some missile dropkick. Owen kicks out. Owens hits the stunner, gets the win. 
After the match, the Johnny and Gozo continue to argue. Vega walks back down to the ring, tells them to both want the same thing. Instead of fighting each other, they need to fight together. Andrade and Garza follow as she tells them to go to the back. So, obviously, these guys are, are definitely a Paul Heyman project, both of them. And, of course, out of, the two, out of the two men, Andrade has the better chance of doing something because he is Charlotte Flair's boyfriend slash fiancé, as far as I know. So, they, he has the better chance of getting the attention, the better chance of getting used by the company. So... If anything happens, I think Angel Garza will be heading back to NXT, which he should have never come up to N- from NXT eventually. This 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 group is going to be buried and taken off and just be completely destroyed and will be back to square one. But it is WWE and they got to go with what Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon want. Let's see what happens next. Hold on. So WWE decides they're just going to have Angel Garza and Andrade go out there and ruin each other's careers. It's, it's just so sad that WWE continues to do stupid shit. These guys should be your future. They should be two guys that are built up. Remember a couple weeks ago when Andrade, uh, Andrade Angel Garza, and Austin Theory had that, uh, that night, that one night where they were just laying roughshod over everybody, doing the Ungobernables type... Um, um, posed together and looked like they were going to be the next force to be reckoned with and then week after week after week Andrade and Zelina Vega and Austin Theory and all of them were arguing then Austin Theory was destroyed by them and he's with Seth Rollins now and it just seems like WWE just it's like Vince McMahon has given up on these guys it really sucks the way things are going right now and they don't have an actual full crowd because you can't gauge how well this is going yes having a crowd is great, but it's done WWE's way so they can do and say whatever. They can have, they can pretty much dictate the way the cheers and boos go. You can ha- make it sound like there's actually people who want to boo these guys or cheer these guys, and it's just so. Ugh. Now, WWE, if you noticed during the Street Profits entrance later in the night, that there were actual people in the crowd who were not NXT or NXT talent or, a, or, NXT or PC trainees. They actually had a small select few of fans in the crowd. Then we find out at the end of the night that there is going there was a test positive test to a PC trainee of COVID-19. So WWE's fact that they're having crowds now is probably going to be going away very, very soon. It sucks, but this is what WWE gets, and they just started letting people in. On top of that, if you notice, nobody in this crowd is allowed is wearing a mask. WWE has forbid talent and anyone else from wearing a mask because they don't like the way it looks on TV. Yet AEW has people in the crowd, on their staff, who are wearing masks. If they want to wear a mask, they're going to wear a mask. But yet WWE, in the ways that they are, has prevented people from wearing a mask. And it's absolutely sickening. Backstage, MVP is telling Lashley he's going to get everything he promised tonight, or him, later MVP says they're going to address the reason Lashley isn't, champ- Lashley isn't champion right now. Then we go to the ring, and they are in the ring. La- MVP says last night at Backlash, Lashley had his night ruined and because of his wife. Drew McIntyre took advantage of the circumstances. This is all Lana's fault. She is the reason he is not a WWE champion. Lana walks down to the ring and says she loves her husband, and she would never do anything to hurt him. Lashley is where, is he, is where he is because of her. MVP calls Lana a thought, a tot, which, okay. Lana says MVP is the problem. Lana, Aunt Lashley says Lana is the problem. She she said something about, like, they were on a hot streak. And he's like, we? We were on a hot streak? When was the last time you laced up your boots, Lana? This is your fault. I should be WWE champion, but you had to make it all about yourself. You had to, like, you have to post a sexual sex life on TV, on TV, and on national TV because you wanted to be famous. He wants a divorce. She says she should have. Um, if she wanted to use her sex life to be famous, she would have slept with somebody fam- more famous. Maybe she should have slept with Drew. Drew then put, tweeted, put a tweet out on Twitter saying, First off, I'm married, and I would go through the. He pretty much said, I would go through the biggest steps of hell before I'd even have a thought of sleeping with you. So, burned by, by, burned by um, Lashley and burned by. 
um, Drew McIntyre. Lana is definitely somebody that needs to be gone. So they took, so you had this entire angle for Lana and Lashley and Rusev that went absolutely nowhere, put nobody over, and now you're going to end it because that time is up. We all knew it was coming, but seriously, this is what you got. Lashley, Lana, Rusev never had a full conclusion. Lashley, Lana, I mean, Rusev never got to get his revenge. Lashley never got to get over. Lana didn't get over. This whole thing was a waste of fucking time. And now we're going to have another divorce for Lana. First, like Tom Phillips said, her second divorce in eight months. That is absolutely sad. Backstage, the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders are talking about their own cinematic universe. When Akira Tozawa and his ninjas show up, Tozawa says, Sequel! Calls the seven foot ninja over, which is that Jordan fella who is from who is definitely a former basketball player. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash were in the PC late last year working with this guy, and they had high praises for him. So, with the fact that he's seven foot tall and looks like he does, he's he's definitely caught up without even spending a second on NXT television. So, you know, when Vince McMahon sees somebody this guy size, he he sees dollar signs. He might not have any. He might not be. A great worker, but Vince McMahon sees dollar signs. Even though we're in a different era of wrestling where you don't have to be a seven foot tall behemoth to draw money. It's all about in ring worth in ring work work ethic. Plain and simple. So the profits in the profits have to hold I have our back um, the um, Viking Raiders back. Ford says he has an idea and they walk off. So the three profits make their entrance and like they used to do before we got into, got into COVID-19 territory, they go past the plexiglass and start bawling and, play, and um, playing with the crowd, dancing with the crowd, going crazy. Casey Catton's are, Kate and Carter are there. You see a bunch of other people. Jesse Kamea's wearing their um, Street Profits um, thing. Eric Bugenhagen goes, or Rick Boogs, whatever you want to say his name is, is there um, playing air guitar with them. He's going completely crazy. Then you get around to where the hard cam is at, and that's where you see all the actual fans. So then we have an eight-person tag team match, the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits versus Akira Tatazawa and his ninjas. This was a joke. You had three guys dressed like ninjas come in there, get absolutely destroyed, um... Akira Tozawa never tagged into the match. These three guys get bloodied and beaten down. They get beat. The Viking Raiders and the Street Profits win. After the match, Tozawa calls the Big Ninja in. The Viking Raiders call out the power of the Big Slow. So he clears the ring with the Viking Raiders, the Street Profits, the Ninja, and Akira Tozawa back off. They are out of there. And that is that. So, wow. This is the best we got. This is the best you got for the Tag Team Champions. It's just so sad that this is what this company has come to. We have no Tag Team Champions worth a damn. The Tag Team title should just be abolished. It's a part, like, after the fact that the COVID-19 um, tested positive has happened and there's, like, a lack of communication, there's actually a lot of talent, apparently, wanting to, you know, do a, have a hiatus because they don't want to, like, they don't want to risk their lives to work for a company that is not t hasn't tested one iota until today. Today, They have canceled SmackDown Raw and 205 Live and all those other tapings, which, by the way, wasn't this week's episodes of Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and 205 Live all taped last week? And it was the last episodes in the Paul Heyman era? Why, if you, if, why did you not just stick with those tapings have a week to get all this stuff situated, all the testing's done and everything, and then come back next week. Why the fuck would you go and have a taping just to get rid of everything that you had left for Paul Heyman just to say you're starting the, era, the, the Bruce Pritchett era on Raw t last night? Makes no goddamn sense. Now, we, have, we go to Seth Rollins. Earlier in the day, it was Rey Mysterio put out a couple of screen, screenshotted tweets of his son with his son and he he was wondering where his son is at his mom was his son he said his mother his wife was worried about where his son was at his son told him he was already on his way to peace on the way to the performance center and he's got all this and he's of course he's old enough he's an adult to say, do whatever the fuck he wants so if he wants to go um, deal with Seth Rollins he can 
So Seth has asked about Dominic and everything, and he says he knows he's here and he's against his father's wishes. He needs Dominic here. He's going to deliver a message tonight. Then we go back to the ring after we come back from break, and Seth Rollins is in the ring. He was says he invited Rey Mysterio to come to Raw this week, but he knows he knows he isn't cleared, and he's sad that, that Rey Mysterio could, did not accept his invitation, but he knows Dominic is here. He knows he's here, and he wants to talk. Rey Mysterio shows up on the big screen, telling him that, don't you mess with my son. If you do, you will be ended. I will me- I will fuck you up if you fuck with my son. Dominic, I mean, Mysterio says he couldn't stop him from going. Rollins says he just wants to help Dominic. Dominic can be part of the greater good. He is here. He is starting, like, Seth Rollins is here to build the future of WWE Raw, and Dominic can be a part of that. Seth, of course, he wants Dominic to join him, Murphy, and Theory, which, by the way, he called Austin Theory Theory, so my inclination is is Austin Theory lost his first name, and he's now just going to be Theory. I could be wrong, but I think they're going to start going down that road of calling Austin Theory just Theory. Rollins says... He will have to make an example of Dominic if Dominic doesn't want to be on the right side of history. He gets on his knees. He keeps talking to, Do- to Mysterio. And from behind comes Dominic. Now, if we were in a... This this is one of the advantages of not having a full-fledged crowd. Because in a full-fledged crowd, Dominic comes up behind Seth Rollins. The crowd is going crazy. They, they, they're pretty much telling... Seth Rollins, turn around, you idiot, because somebody's coming to beat your ass. So, Dominic beats up on Seth Rollins for a bit, takes him to the outside, throws him against the um, barricade. Murphy and Theory, who who have been looking for Dominic the entire time, finally come out. They try to take out Dominic. um, Dominic's in the ring. Murphy comes out to him, but he throws Murphy back out of the ring. He comes after, he goes after Theory. Theory misses an attack on him. Dominic slithers away and gets packed behind the plexiglass, getting away from Seth Rollins and his minions. You can see Rey Mysterio go on the Titan Tron, thankful that his son was able to get out of Dodge, and he sent the message that he was scorning to send. Now, it was report it was announced that Rey Mysterio will be on Monday Night Raw next week. So either the video we saw was Rey Mysterio was in California, he's going to fly out. He was supposed to fly out last night because, of course, this was taped during the afternoon. Or Rey Mysterio was in a mock-up of a place to sit, and he was actually in the Performance Center in a different part of the show, and is just going to be there for the TV taping next that was supposed to happen today. Now, backstage, we see R-Truth, Bobby, well, we see Bobby Lashley and MVP talking. And of course, it was announced before the show that it was going to be MVP and Bobby Lashley versus the champions of R-Truth and Drew McIntyre. Now, R-Truth shows up and he wants to give condolences to Lashley for getting sent, sent to Claymore Carnage, wherever that is. Backstage, MVP and Lashley find R-Truth under the ring as they are pissed off at him. He's apparently fighting off ninjas who are trying to steal his baby. Truth is fighting with the ninjas. McIntyre walks in and calls Lashley clown. NBC says if McIntyre has had any integrity, he put his title on the line tonight. R-Truth too. R-Truth says, bingo, Yahtzee, we accept. McIntyre is not happy about this because... Now, of course McIntyre wants to be a fighting champion. He wants to be like one of the best champions ever. But he doesn't want somebody to... He doesn't want to put his championship in the hands of somebody else. Putting it in a tag team match is not something that McIntyre really wants to do. McIntyre is upset, but he's like, you know what? Fine. Winner take all for these titles. So, <laughs> Archie says at the end of the night, he could be the new Becky Two Belts, and McIntyre tells our truth that's not how it works. So pretty much, our truth accepted the challenge, thinking if he wins the match, because it's winner take all, so he he will be able to be the WWE Champion and the 24-7 Champion. And of course, our, uh, McIntyre tells him that's not how this works. If he wins, they keep the titles. He doesn't win the WWE title. So this is the best you have for the WWE Champion. 
Now, it has come out that the whole entire feud between Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre has been the work of Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre, which I'm not a, I'm not a fan of this feud, but I like when you hear that the, the talent themselves come up with their own feud and it's not something that was built by Paul Heyman, Bruce Pritchard, or Vince McMahon. That's how it used to be, is that if you have a feud against two guys who are fans of each other and have used to work together, like these guys did have a feud back in Impact Wrestling, apparently. Wasn't watching back then, still ain't watching now. But they worked together before, they like working together, so they said, you know what, let us work together, we want to have a feud going out of WrestleMania, of course, we got to Seth Rollins first. So this feud apparently is far from over, even though we'll talk about the match later on. But Peyton Royce and Billy Kay versus Natalia and Liv Morgan. This was absolutely fucking pointless. Why are you going to give me a match between Liv Morgan and... But why would you have Liv Morgan and, and Natalia put together? Why are they in a tag team? What is the reason for these, girl, these women in a tag team? I hate when you throw people together like this. But this match was nothing. You had Natalia... Start the match. It was like Liv Morgan wanted to start the match off, but Natalia tagged in. She fought. She wrestled with them for a bit. Then Liv Morgan tagged in. She was a house of fire, even though she didn't really, like the hot tag. It wasn't even really earned for this match. So Natalia is taken out of the ring. Liv Morgan actually is rolling up. I think it was um, Billy Kay or Peyton Royce. While Billy Kay is being taken out of the ring because the referee is too fucking stupid to realize that, hey, there's a pin going on behind there. Five count if you want to count it. Next thing you know, double team move, one, two, three. It was called the fall from grace from the uh, Moronics, and they win. After the match, they challenge the Banks and Bailey to a tag team panel match tonight. They get no response, and they say, well, I guess we'll get that match next week. Do we need to see Sasha Banks and Bailey take on the Moronics again? No. They are absolutely terrible. They bring nothing to the table. The tag team titles have done they, like the tag team titles need to be abolished. Absolutely abolished because there's not enough to, not, not enough women who are being used right to even have a tag team division. I think Bailey and Sasha Banks need to lose the titles at Extreme Rules to somebody other than the Moronics because what happened the last time these two women had the titles they had the titles and were not on TV except for four or five times in their shitty title reign backstage we see the big show talking to Christian he thinks telling us to think long and hard doing this Randy Christian says he knows what he has to do because as big show said this is he's not just doing this to because you can't get cleared and you know that he's doing this because he's Randy Orton and he can do what he wants and but but Big Show said if it was me and he said that to me, I would I would I would shut his I would knock that smirk off his face with one of these pointing to like showing his fist. So we go backstage again to another section of the stage and backstage and Natalia is blaming Blake Morgan for the loss, saying you made too many mistakes, too many rookie mistakes, and now I understand why Ruby Riot let you go. Morgan rocks off, not happy with the disrespect. Natalia says she built this division and she's getting nothing for it, so with the lack of respect. Lana walks in and says she understands because she did everything for her Bobby and she got hit with the divorce. So, are we getting a tag team that nobody asked for? I don't know. I don't care. Natalia's been around for 10 plus years. She brings nothing more to the table. She's done everything she can do. She needs to go retire. Lana brings nothing and has never brought anything other than being a manager to the table. She needs to be taken off TV as well. On the stage, Christian is walking back and forth, pacing. I believe it was Shelly Caruso came up to him, asking what he's going to do. If he, has he thought about the match, about the challenge laid out by Randy Orton? He pretty much sits there and says, yes, I accept. I'm not going to let him get away with this. And he walks away. Now we go to Apollo Crews getting ready for his champion uh, for his match with Shelton Benjamin, who we haven't seen since the Royal Rumble. Yes, Shelton Benjamin is still employed by WWE. April fifteenth came and passed, and Shelton Benjamin was not one of those talents who got released over everybody else. The last time we saw him was getting chucked out of the ring after having a buddy buddy moment with Brock Lesnar. But MVP tells Crews he's proud of him. And he talks about him wanting to be a fighting, about him being a fighting champion, which Cruz says, yeah, I want to be a fighting champion. But MVP is like, it's not about being, just about being a fighting champion, it's about being a smart champion. 
Because if you keep fighting all these men as you go, you're going to get burnt out. And you need somebody like me to help you pick and choose who you face. And as being one of the longest U.S. champions of all time, I could help you there. Now, Paulo Cruz says, you know what, that's nice advice and everything, but no thanks, I'm good. MVP hands him this U.S. championship and says, hey, listen, you need me in your corner if you want to keep this championship. He says, yeah, whatever, man, and that was that. Backstage, we get a random Charlotte Flair, Ric Flair talking segment where Charlotte Flair is just getting praise from her dad. She's like, you're my dad, you're going to tell say this to me anyway. He asks her what you what you're gonna do next. He's like, what, like, what title I want? He's like, no, no, you're like a, you're the most decorated woman in all of WWE. I want to know like who's getting under your skin and who you're gonna go for next. And she's like, I do what I want, and just woos, and that's his that's her answer. Then we get the Kapala Cruz versus Shelton Benjamin. This was a yeah, it was a short match. Benjamin misses a dragon whip, standing moonsault by Cruz. Benjamin kicks out. Benjamin tries to pin Cruz with his feet on the rope. Now, Apollo Crews, uh, while, while Shelton Benjamin is arguing with the ref who got caught, who caught Shelton Benjamin with his feet on the rope, Apollo Crews rolls him up. He's near the rope, so Benjamin grabs, uh, not, not Benjamin, but Apollo Crews grabs the ropes and holds him down for the one, two, three. Turnabout is fair play, I guess. Samoa Joe's loving this. Samoa Joe is loving the fact that Apollo Crews did what he did. While, of course, you know, Byron Sanchez is like, I don't condone it, but and Ty- Byron Sanchez is like, you know what? It's turned about it's fair play, which, yes, it is. Backstage, Mar- like, our truth is being confronted by the ninjas and the Tozawa. He's getting goofy, does the crane kick stance. And then McIntyre shows up, the ninjas and, and um, um, the ninjas and Akira Tozawa back away. Drew McIntyre tells him, you need to get serious about this. And truth is like, I understand. I'm gonna go make this right, and he walks off. We go see we see Oscar being interviewed. She says, Nia Jax started this fight after, of course, speaking in Japanese for a bit, couldn't understand the damn thing there. She says, I'm going to finish this fight. And she goes and walks off. <clears throat> now, our truth comes back in the McIntyre and he says, I talked to the powers that be. And now there's only one title on the line, and it's your championship. McIntyre is none too pleased with this. None too pleased whatsoever. So that's going to be happening here in a bit. Then we go back to, we go to Street Profits Viking Raiders talking again. When the big show shows up wearing a Viking Raider shirt, as well as having a Street Profits shirt over his shoulder, they're wondering how are we going to start, finish this, anything we can do, anything you can do, we can do better saga. And it takes the big show to tell them they should just settle it in the ring. And they get all like, oh, this guy's a genius. He has all the answers we ever need. That is just genius. And I'm like, really? It takes the big show to tell you how and what you should be doing for your for the for this. This is how you figure out who should be going for a championship match. Really? That's what you needed? Holy shit, that's fucking ridiculous. The tag team division needs to be abolished. I I like I know that Fox and USA Network want their own brands, but by this time, the win- this tag team division needs to be abolished. It needs to be fused into one because there's not enough tag teams on Raw. I mean, back in 2016, when this whole brand split thing happened, we had enough tag teams on both sides to have a solid division for each side. We don't anymore. We have only we only have two legitimate tag teams on Monday Night Raw, and we only have like two or three on SmackDown. It's time to abolish. And refuse these tag teams and just have tag team champions for both shows. Women's championships for both shows so we can have a women's tag team division that actually matters as well. But of course, as we know, the reason of the FTR left is because WWE has no respect for tag team wrestling. Speaking of tag team wrestling, we have R-Truth and Drew McIntyre versus MVP and Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship. Yes, I know this should be main eventy because, again, the WWE Championship should never come, should never, should always main event and nothing should come above it. So McIntyre starts the match off beating up on Lashley. Lashley fires up. McIntyre cuts him off with a clothesline. McIntyre's about to get hit with the Claymore. Truth tags himself in and gets suplexed by MVP. 
MVP and Lashley work all over Truth. And of course, you see in the corner, McIntyre is beside himself. He's pissed off that he could lose his championship for reals without even being pinned. Truth manages to finally tag in um, McIntyre towards the end of the match. McIntyre hits a Claymore and MVP, looks to get the pin, but he sees R-Truth gets up on, the, up on the apron, so he tags him in, tells him to get up, lifts him up, and throws him onto MVP. One, two, three. McIntyre retains his championship thanks to R-Truth. That is it. Done. No more for Bobby Lashley. He's had his shots. He got... He, he lost the title clean. He lost the title match tonight, last night, clean as a whistle. No more for him. Plain and simple. No more. Backstage, Ric Flair tells Christian he isn't ready for this. He needs to stop. He doesn't need to do anything. He's not proving anything. Christian, who is taping up, of course, just tells him, I got to do this, Rick. I got to do this. And walks off. Bailey and Sasha Banks are here, and they do come out to have a promo. And of course, it's Bailey's birthday yesterday. So happy belated birthday. She says, we're going to celebrate her birthday all week while we first go to NXT. We started off last night. We're going to NXT to teach Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox a lesson. And then we're going to go to SmackDown to celebrate even more. But then out come the Moronics to make the challenge again. They want to know if these two are going to make to have this match next week. They bring up the rumors about last year's WrestleMania after they beat them in a fatal four-way, which they failed to to mention that there was a fatal four-way last year for the tag team championships at WrestleMania. I think it was Beth, it was the Divas of Doom, the Moronics, Beck, um, the Boston Hug Connection at the time, and I can't remember the fourth team. But they seem to fail to mention that that's how they won is because you had a top rope glam slam and they took, a, they took advantage of the pin. But they, they, Peyton ends up... Who is it? Royce, Pey, um, Peyton Royce smacks Banks. Ba Bailey's like, this is my birthday. You can't ruin it. We accept. Throws down the mic. Walk, and the morons walk away as Banks is not happy that she accepted the challenge. So yeah, next week we're getting not one, but two tag team title matches. How is that going to go? We'll find out next week. Unless, of course, somebody gives out spoilers. Which, by the way, they did have, like I said, they did have people in the crowd. But they were, they, they, they had to sign a waiver. If you got COVID-19, WWE was not liable for, for suing. And they could not get, like, leak out spoilers. Oscar versus Nia Jax for the Raw Women's Championship. Of course, this is a rematch from Sunday because Oscar and Nia Jax both were counted out. Apparently, Vince McMahon made a change because it was supposed to be Oscar going over. And, of course, moving on to Charlotte Flair, which we all know how that's going to go. Oscar drops Kit Jax. Jax clotheslines Oscar. Oscar locks, gets her into an armbar. Jax gets the ropes. Oscar misses a hip attack. Jax walks over right into a triangle by Oscar. Because she was trying to go for a, a Samoan drop with something. Fireman's carry on the apron. But Oscar turns it into a triangle. Jax powerbombed Oscar on the floor. Which is like nasty as fuck. Now if anybody has seen Oscar versus Minoru Suzuki. From her, Japanese, from her days in Japan. Anything Nia Jax does to her. Just looks like child's play to what she had to go through when she took on Minoru Suzuki. So you could usually cringe for something like this, but then I remember seeing that video and how disturbing that was. So I can tell you, Oscar can go through anything that Nia Jax puts her through. After the break, Jax and Oscar trade strikes. Oscar drops Jax into the tree of woe. Oscar crushes Jax with a double foot stomp. Uh, she gets her into a pin count and only gets her two. She had her locked up pretty tight too. Oscar, then Jax hits a Samoan drop. Oscar's foot is clearly under the bottom rope. The referee, John Cone, sees this, doesn't even make the count. Oscar, um, Nia Jax gets pissed off. And John Cone gets up, looks he's like, you crossed the line, you crossed the line. Goes to walk over slowly. Instead of just ringing the bell, goes to walk over slowly to disqualify her. Nia Jax turns to John Cone. Oscar rolls her up. John Cone comes back over. One, two, three. Very quick pin. Oscar contains... Nia Jax screwed, uh, screwed by the referee, but it's her own goddamn fault. So Oscar contains the title. Nia Jax is probably going to get another match at Extreme Rules because John Cohn crossed the line and allowed and issued a fast count. 
Then we get to the main event. Now, WrestleVote, at the beginning of the night, well, during the day, tweeted out that they weren't going to spoil anything, but something unexpected was going to happen on Raw, and then teased that it was going to be Christian making his in-ring return. I did not want to see this. Nobody should want to see this. So we get ourselves five minutes left in the show. Five minutes left when Randy Orton was coming out. So they're both ready to wrestle. We had the ring announcement by Mike Rome. Out comes Ric Flair. He tells Christian, you don't need to do this. I just got done talking to Edge. You're not proving anything. Just stop. Christian's like, I got to do this. Looks like Ric Flair's about to leave. Big low blow on the Christian. Ric Flair leaves. Randy Orton in his legend killer mode. Big punt kick to the face. Christian sold it like a champ. Looks like he just fucking died. Randy Orton looks like he's concerned. Finally pulls him over. Gets on the top of him. One, two, three. Randy Orton has just beaten Christian in what was literally just two moves. After the match, Orton yells at Christian that he didn't want to do this. Tells him it's your fault. Your fault. You shouldn't have come here on my and get in my ring and disrespect me like that. And that's how the show ends. So, Vince McMahon wanted Bruce Pritchard to bring the raw ratings back up right now. Rant Heyman, knowing that you don't have anybody to really fall back on because you're missing so many talents, that we need to build new stars. That's why you brought Austin Theory up. That's why he brought Angel Garza up. That's why he was pushing the Austin Theory, Angel Garza, and Andrade feud for uh, um, um, stable for a bit. Then you put Austin Theory with Seth Rollins. What about Apollo Crews? That was a project of uh, of. Paul Heyman, how long is he going to be U.S. champion? WWE, Vince McMahon is fucking delusional. This, it's, you're never going to see change in this company until Vince McMahon is gone. That was quite clearly last night what they were going. They wanted a quick ratings pop. Not a way to build these guys up to where down the line you have a string of ratings up instead of just having a quick ratings draw and then we lose that rating the very next week. This is what you get for Vince McMahon getting rid of Paul Heyman. We are now stuck with Bruce Pritchard at the helm until Vince McMahon gets bored with his ideas and doesn't want to have him as the leader anymore and goes back to doing everything himself. How long is it going to be till Vince McMahon scapegoats Bruce Pritchard? We all know it's going to happen. This show was an absolute shit show. It sucked. Nothing on this show was good. The fact that you had the WWE Champion saddled with R-Truth as his tag team partner in a match that did not need to happen. Any chance of Bobby Lashley versus Dream McIntyre at Extreme Rules does not need to happen now. They need to find something else out now. Here's an idea. Randy Orton is, uh, is available. He's already killed two legends apparently. What's left of him? It's time for them to pull the trigger on Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. Maybe they want to sell that, save that for SummerSlam. But then who does Drew McIntyre face at Extreme Rules? If he even needs to have a match, you don't have to, since they have the Universal title and the WWE Championship on two, on two baby faces who are full-time stars, you don't have to have the championships both be defended on each show. So if they wanted to have Drew McIntyre miss the next pay-per-view, that is fine. I know they're not going to do that because they're very, very, very much lacking star power. But they're not going to have any star power because WWE doesn't know how to make new stars. Paul Heyman was going to go out there and do his best in the circumstances that you have to build new stars. But Vince McMahon doesn't want to do that. He wants the here and now instead of down the line, which you should be doing. Enough of this here and now bullshit. Raw's going to suffer. SmackDown's going to suffer. NXT is going to be down that way too, even though NXT's been suffering since, the, since October last year. But Monday Night Raw is done. I'm out of here. Hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. Like or dislike this video. Find me on Twitter at The France Club. Find me on Twitch.tv slash The France Club. Find me on Instagram at The France Club. And I will see you guys tomorrow for AEW on TNT Review. Until then, my name is The France, and I'll see you guys later.